to Human Rights on Ice. Welcome back to Washington Watch. Joseph back home sitting in for Tony today. So glad that you are with us. Want to remind you of a couple ways that you can stay in touch, stay connected, and stay informed to receive text updates about things that are happening around the country and ways you can be involved. Text the word STAND to 67742. Again, text the word STAND to 67742. In addition, you can download the Stand Firm app where you have not only Washington Watch, but all sorts of other Family Research Council resources. To get the app, type in Stand Firm wherever you download your apps or visit frc.org slash app to download it to your desk top device. It's day 14 of the 2022 Winter Olympics in China. And while others may be covering the games, who won what medal and who didn't, here on Washington Watch, we've been covering the other side of Beijing. And that is the side that has been engaged in systematic human rights abuses. On Tuesday's human rights segment, on today's human rights segment, I'm sorry, we're going to take a look at the Chinese Communist Party's treatment of North Koreans who cross into China to escape from the brutal and authoritarian regime of North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Joining me now to tell us about this from firsthand experience is Jin Hae-jo, a North Korean defector, and we are apparently still waiting to get her on the line, so we're going to wait just one moment but we are going to hear the details of her experience with the Chinese government, because there are North Korea, as you know, is typically at the top of the list of human rights violating lists. The North Korean government is not only as oppressive as any government on earth today, it is as oppressive as any government in human history, absolutely denying human rights to its citizens. Chief among those, of course, is the right to exercise religious freedom. Uh, surveys that have been done in North Korea have indicated that the percentage of the country that is Christian is very close to zero. Sounds like we have her. Do we have her? Okay, we do have her. So now joining me is Jin Hae Jo. She's a North Korean defector who was forcibly repatriated by China back to North Korea two times. Jin Hae, welcome to Washington Watch. Hi. Uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me here. Well, we are glad to have you. First, tell us a bit of your story. How did you escape from North Korea? Yeah, when I was 10 years old, uh, my mother was uh, put my sister uh, was six years old at that time. She put her in backpack and hold my hands and we crossed the Tuma River swimming and we crossed it. And tell us what happened after that, because we know that the Chinese government sent you back. How did they find out about you? Yeah, I, actually four times I was catched by uh, Chinese uh, police and sent back to the North Korea. And first time was we was asleep at home. I was 14 years old and they just uh, searching house by house and ask the people, if you know where is the North Korean defector leave, we're going to pay you money, 10,000 uh, uh, yuan or 20,000 yuan. So people, uh, some bad people, because of the money, they uh, call the police or they just searching by house to house and they found us. So we sent back to the North Korea, but I was survived because I was under uh, 17 years old and first time sent back to the North Korea, North Korea regime give us the one chance. That's how I was survived from prison and we escaped again. Why is it that the Chinese government tries to send people back to North Korea? So when I was sent the first time, the Chinese government, the policeman was telling me, say that after sending us to the North Korea government and the North Korea paid the money for uh, each person. So that time the North Korea, because they don't have money, they pay for uh, send the one of the tree, wood, uh, one of the wood for can uh, build some houses. So each North Korean person changed with the one wood 
So that's the first issue. And second one is the North Korean government uh, keep paying the money to China and the Chinese government, they don't want to uh, some of the North Korea, a lot of North Korean uh, defectors escape from the Tumen River. So they keep control uh, the North Korean people in the Tumen River and they catch them and keep sending to them. Unfortunately, we only have about a minute left, but tell us, as you see what China is trying to communicate in these Olympics, what's your reaction to what's happening there now? 2008, I was uh, come to America. After a few months later, the Chinese uh, China government was have Olympic. And that time I was doing hunger strip for 16 days to ask the Chinese government to stop sending North Korean defectors. Because we have more than 300 people, 300 million people died because of hunger and because of torture from the North Korean government. China, they know about it, but they keep sending North Korean defectors to kill, let them kill by North current government. So this Olympic is for peaceful for the whole world. But China, they don't have that kind of mind or heart and they keep killing people and they did the Olympics. So I really don't like to America or the whole world to join the uh, Olympics in China. Well, we understand from your experience why you would feel that way. Unfortunately, we are out of time. But Jin Hei, Joe, thank you so much uh, for taking some time to share your story with us. It is a really important one. And we are thankful that you are here now and that you have found some safety. And we pray the same for many others in North Korea. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.